Okay, everyone, I think we're going to start. Um, let me just say that I'm, I'm here to welcome all of you along with my um, colleague, Christina. Um, thank you so much for coming, um, especially to those of you who've taken a flight or a, a train to come, um, some of you across the world. We're really grateful and so excited to have you here um, today. So I just wanted to um, start by introducing myself. I am a lecturer here in the School of um, Public and International Affairs. And I've spent most of my career um, working in global health um, and different NGOs. And for the last 13 years, I've been working with and for UNICEF. Um, and now I've been here for about two years. Um, and I would say the common thread throughout my career or at least the thing that I would say I care the most about is, is health equity. So I'm very excited about this topic. Um, and I'm looking forward to having discussions with all of you um, about how we can, you know, as individuals contribute to greater equity um, and also perhaps together if there are ways that we might conceptualize ways to work together moving forward. And I think that's something that we're really um, looking forward to brainstorming with, with all of you um, on. So um, I also just um, wanted to thank a few people um, in particular, um, Janet Curry, who's in the back from the Center for Health and Wellbeing, Gilbert Collins, I don't see Gilbert, but um, they've provided um, some funding and support for this meeting as has um, and Sonia Majola from the Office of Population Research has been su very supportive um, and um, throughout and then of course our Dean Amani Jamal who's about to say hello to everyone in a minute <laughs> um, she she can't be here in person but she's she's there and um, have, have been really wonderful and supportive and excited about this meeting um, and of course, to my organizing team, um, Mary Lou Delaney, who's probably organizing somewhere, um, and then Ariza Francis Francisco, who's also probably organizing somewhere. So those two have been super helpful um, throughout the whole planning process. And then to Christina Stefan, who will speak next. So sh um, she, uh, I reached out to her kind of randomly when I saw something that she wrote, and it inspired me. It seemed that we were kindred spirits in caring about equity. Um, so it just wrote out of the blue and we've had multiple conversations and um, conceptualized this meeting together um, as partners. So really happy to have her there. And then of course to all of the rest of you here who, who have an interest um, and there's some students of mine in the back there. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> um, Great, so, so maybe just before I turn to Christina, I wanted to say that we did think of several aims for this meeting, and I just wanted to, um, to share those with you um, here. So the first is to promote understanding of current health inequities in African countries. Second, to share policymakers' experiences in advancing health equity through evidence-based policies and programs that prioritize the most disadvantaged. Um, third, to explore current equity challenges regarding research in, with, and for African countries, and to explore more equitable approaches. Um, and fourth, to discuss how to advance health equity in Africa through research and policy initiatives that are equity-focused and sustainable. Um, these are all really big topics, so you can imagine we're not going to really be able to go into much depth in one and a half days. So the idea is just to um, introduce a range of different topics and, and get us thinking about those together. Um, so we do hope to present both some of the big challenges, but also opportunities and some interesting innovations that we're seeing um, happen in the field. And that's um, the group here has a lot to say about those things, so I'm, I'm very excited. Okay, so maybe I'll just um, ask Christina to come up um, and I can introduce her quickly. She is the director of the Institute for Global Health Equity Research and the Andrew Weiss Chair of Research in Global Health at the University of Global Health Equity in Rwanda. Um, she served in, in different teaching positions through her career, including head of the Department of Oncology at Tigerberg Hospital and Stellenbosch University. Um, as well as Vice President of the Medical Research Council in South Africa. 
She is the founder of the African Cancer Institute and the African Medical Research and Innovation Institute. And she also served as chair and founder of the African Cancer Economics Network and chair of Women in Global Oncology. Um, so Christina, just um, come have a, a welcome for everyone and then we will we'll, um, pass on to Dean Amani. Every call of tomorrow starts with our actions today, which we need to transform our imagination of a better world into reality. Health to become equally accessible to all. And I would cite what Paul Farmer said, equity is the only acceptable goal. So when I started talking for the first time with um, Alisa, it seemed that I knew her for an entire life. We shared so many stories and life experiences and we may, were making long-term plans as we were knowing each other, maybe since childhood. The reality was not exactly as it seemed, but rather different. Would I have ever imagined that after our call, which seemed like yesterday, we would end up here today with the most prestigious speakers, most influential change makers and visionary people in health equity, in the most stimulating, rewarding environment at Princeton, which welcomed us like being maybe our second home. I am Christina Stefan. I'm indeed a professor in global health and medicine. I'm Andrew Weiss, Chair of Research, and I'm leading the Institute of Global Health Equity Research, which is part of the University of Global Health Equity based in Rwanda. I have not to miss the chance just to define in four words the institute which I lead and for which I'm extremely proud that I could bring uh, here five of our researchers, young researchers. So if I could define just in four words the Institute, I would say the Institute of Global Health Equity Research is defined by research, by innovation, by impact, and most important, by equity. And we have embarked on a journey to become Africa's leading Institute of Global Health Equity Research, recognized worldwide for our innovative approach, for our impact, for our inclusivity, and also for our togetherness. So as I continue my life journey, I learn to be more appreciative and grateful every day for the wonderful people who enter in my life, for new and rich experiences and learning opportunities. I believe that is true. You are never too old to learn. And of course, everyone knows that thank you are usually at the end um, of, um, of an event, but also for everyone else who knows me, we also accept that I do not follow in most circumstances the rules, but do it differently. And I will say from the beginning, that nothing of this happening today would have been possible without Alisa, who was actually the engine, the inspiration, the soul of this entire experience. And I need to also acknowledge Gilbert, who, with um, a few days' notice, decided to come where? To us, to Rwanda, to Butaro to our campus, to our university, visit the campus, interact with our researchers and students, and supported Alisa and my desire to inspire students and faculty at Princeton while we look for the most innovative ways in which we could all interact and advance global health equity as we share the same principles, desires, and wish for a better world. 
You have seen we have a unique program, which again, Alisa went all the way to bring the top researchers, scientists, policymakers from Africa and combine them with teachers from Princeton. From Cape Town, my hometown, to Nigeria, Ethiopia, Rwanda, my second home, to local African colleagues, and of course, USA participants. So why this conference? And why am I here? Why are you here? What do we want to achieve? And how do we define success? And what makes it different than any other conferences? It is different as we join forces. And again, a prestigious university like Princeton and a very young but vibrant institute like ours, the Institute of Global Health Equity Research. One in United States with tradition, one in Rwanda with aspirations. East Africa, but again, we share the same thoughts and the same ideas to inspire young people, to get also senior researchers and policy makers to share their best strategies and innovative ways in advancing global health equity and, as I said, making the world a better place for all. This is just the beginning. Hold on onto your seats as we take off. Remember this day as we will continue our journey. And as we move ahead, we will invite you all to be part of this experience and create memories. Enjoy the interaction the lectures, connect, network, create new experiences and friendships, and more than anything, have some fun. Great, thank you so much, Christina. So I'm very excited um, and grateful to Dean Amani Jamal, who is going to um, just welcome everyone as well. Um, Dean Jamal is um, the Dean of the School of Public and International Affairs here at Princeton. She is also the Edwards S. Sanford Professor of Politics and a Professor of Politics and International Affairs at Princeton and directs the workshop on Arab Political Development and the Bobst American University of Beirut Collaborative Initiative. Dr. Jamal's scholarship covers the Middle East and North Africa, mass and political behavior, political development and democratization, inequality and economic segregation, Muslim immigration, gender, race, religion, and class. Her book, Barriers to Democracy, which explores the role of civic associations in promoting democratic, uh, sorry, democratic effects in the Arab world, won the 2008 American Political Science Best Book Award in the Comparative Democratization section. She is an author or editor of three other books and numerous peer-reviewed articles and book chapters. Dr. Jamal earned her PhD from the University of Michigan and a bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. She was named a Carnegie Scholar in 2006. Welcome, Amani, and again, I just wish to um, thank you so much for your tremendous support and enthusiasm around this meeting. Over to you. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for that very, very, very generous um, introduction. And welcome, everyone, to the conference. Good morning. Um, I do apologize. I, I'm not with you in person. Um, I'm recovering from a surgery that keeps me at home more than I would like right now. So welcome to our campus. I am Amani Jamal, Dean of the Princeton School of Public and International Affairs. I have the privilege of welcoming you to this important meeting and of introducing the keynote speaker. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to host all of you and to support this wonderful conference. It's a tremendous honor. I also want to thank my colleague, Dr. Sharkey, and also Dr. Stefan for organizing this incredible gathering, and our other school partners like CHW for supporting this effort. As you know, the topic of the discussions today and tomorrow is health equity in Africa. During the current academic year, the continent has been the primary focus of our internationalization efforts here at the school. To cite just a few examples, the school and its centers and programs have welcomed numerous speakers to campus to address a wide variety of African issues and concerns. 
Just this year, our students have benefited from policy trips to Nairobi, Kenya, and Cairo, Egypt. Within our school, we have multiple institutes and programs that include a focus on Africa, students from Africa, and others are pursuing careers in Africa as well. We have partnerships with academic and research institutes on the continent and numerous faculty researching and working on policy issues in Africa across sectors. This conference then and our forthcoming keynote address fit well into our current focus. I am honored to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Agnes Finet-Guajo, whose address addresses titled Why Health Equity is So Important Globally and in Africa. Dr. Benet Guavo is a Rwandan pediatrician who served the health sector in various high-level government positions for 17 years. First as the Executive Secretary of Rwanda's National Age Control Commission, then as Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, and then for five years as Rwanda's Minister of Health. She is a senior lecturer at Harvard University, we won't hold her accountable for that, and an adjunct <laughs> clinical professor of pediatrics at Dartmouth College, and has served as a senior advisor to the Director General of the World Health Organization, a member of the United States National Academy of Medicine, and a fellow of the African Academy of Sciences. In collaboration with her friend, Paul Palmer, Dr. Benigwaho founded the University of Global Health Equity in Rwanda, where she worked as both professor and vice chancellor until her recent retirement. Her main interests include changing the way healthcare is delivered around the world by training the next generation of global health professionals to deliver more equitable, quality health services for all. Her more than 150 peer-reviewed publications address topics including health equity and human rights, implementation science, and improving care delivery, delivery systems. She has received numerous international awards and recognition, recognitions and has often been called a hero of public health around the world. Dr. Benigwaho holds a MD from the University of Libre in Versailles and a PhD from the University of Rwanda College of Business and Economics. Please join me in welcoming her to the School of Public and International Affairs. Mm -hmm. 